Hello YouTube and welcome to the Beyond Standards channel, my name is Shanks and today we are back with a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King on the beautiful map Forts of Aizen. On the left side we have the blue elven player Mei Shadow Fax, against the white Mordor player Mr. Piggy on the right side. It's a El Clasico matchup, good against Evil and if you are following me now for many many months, you know the El Clasico matchups, the good against evil matchups are definitely and by far my most favorite matchups in all Battle for Middle Earth games. We will have two slaughterhouses into the first orc pit, into the third slaughterhouse, that's the build order from the model player Mr. Figgy. On the other side we see two Malone trees into the Varax, into the third Malone tree. This is the patch 2.02 version 8.4. And in this current patch of Rise of the Witch King, I can tell you that much, Mordor got buffed. Especially early game from Mordor faction in Rise of the Witch King got buffed big time. Orcs now, they don't only cost less command points, no, but they also deal 25% more damage. And, you know, 25% from the, from the low attack damage they had doesn't sound that much, but... Remember, early on, you wanna count, you have to count on those orcs. And I feel like the command points, which are costing less now, have even more impact because this way you can now make more orc warriors on lower command points. So we have three slaughterhouses into the second orc pit, and now he's gonna even go for the Haradrim Palace. On the other side, we see the Alvin player starting with those pikemen, and it looks like he's leading to the work layer at the left side of the river. Um, the second unit are gonna be those Lorian archers, because elven players, they normally like to get those archers on the field, so they have something to defend those Malon trees early on. And remember, orcs got only buffed in terms of damage, so the armor is still the same, so they are by far the weakest units in the game, that didn't change at all. And they will still die quite fast against the Lorian archers from the elven player May Shadow Vex. Alright, let's see who's gonna secure the creep here, that's gonna be very very important and I think it's gonna be even more important when it comes to secure the treasure from the creep. Um, smart move here from Mei Fax, make sure to kill the orcs first, don't go for the 50-50 chance. And this way you can still last it easily with those pikemen, get them level 2 and grab the treasure uncontested. Um, again, double orc pit, so he's gonna spam a lot of orc warriors early on. Uh, they cost only 80 each, yes, they are the weakest but also the cheapest units in the game. And he's going for the upgrade on the Haradrim Palace to level 2. The main reason is obviously to get those Haradrim Lancers on the field later on. Easterlings are creeping the work layer at the right side of the river. And the Alvin player is playing surprisingly passive. Two Orc Warriors manage to get to the backside and you will see in a situation like this, the damage buff is gonna come in clutch because they should be technically able to take down those Malone trees much much faster. But Lorian Archers and also the Fortress are doing a great job defending and especially the Builder who was building a wall hub just to body block the enemy Orcs will be more than enough to save the day for now. But during all this time, we are getting to see more and more Orc Warriors and we have also a stable up on the field from the Alvin player Mei Shadow Fax. And the first Lance of Italian of Revendal is joining the battlefield already. So a lot of Orcs in the middle of the map and now after seeing the Lances from Mei Shadow Fax, the Alvin player, Mordor player Mr. Piggy has to make sure that he has always some Easterlings around his army. This way he can deny those Lancers the trample they are looking for. And if they make a mistake and run into the Easterlings in a situation like this, they will not only get taken down very, very fast, but they're also gonna get slowed down. Because the model player is making sure to clamp all his units. By the way, uh, PowerPoint wise, because we have not seen anyone using any PowerPoint just yet, May Shadow Fax has Rallying Call, 450 command points available. 400 command points available for Mr. Piggy. And he actually started with the War Chant. So normally model players they like to start with the Eye of Sauron, the main reason is to get to the power spike of unlocking the industry spell from the spellbook as soon as possible. But this model player wanna play a little bit more offensively. We have double barracks up on the field for Mei of X, but he's playing very defensively. During all this time, guys, I forgot to mention he was creeping the work layer at the top left side, and now even creeping the troll layer at the top right side. 
Warchants will be potentially used in a situation like this. You want to make sure to group all of them first, so he hits the Warchant on every single unit. And I'm assuming my Shadow Fax will be forced to use the Rallying Call defensively. That's a nice catch, by the way. The pikemen from my Shadow Fax are not in position. One of the one of the Archer Battalions has been taken down already. That's a nice move, switching the Battalion to the whole ground stance. This way they don't get one-shotted. You can see yourself, they barely were able to survive. And they will be remaining alive. Um... But, you know, even in a situation like this, he had so many archers on the field and there was only one Lancer from Mr. Piggy, the model player, which is not enough to deal with the um, Elvin army. And yeah, he was able to take down many of these, uh, Hara, you know, Lorian archers, but the main objective was obviously to keep those Malone trees alive. And I think that should be doable right now because the units around this area are in the range of the fortress and the fortress should be more than enough to keep this Malon tree alive. And again, uh, the fact that he was able to creep the work layer but also the troll layer will give him a lot of power points, experience. You can see his uh, Miflon units are almost level 3. And he has also the inn under his control now, which is gonna give him the chance to get those peasants on the field. 450 command points for May Shadow Facts, almost 7 power points collected. We have um, Eye of Sauron unlocked and two power points collected afterwards. So the model player is eight power points away from getting the industry spell from the spell book unlocked. Um, Haradrim Palace is still only level two. We might see some Haradrim archers later on in the game, but for now he's gonna even build a third orc pit just to you know maintain the creep, uh, maintain the pressure by spamming a lot of orcs on the field. And that's gonna be the first and the biggest counter attack from the Elven player. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. That's a bad positioning from the model player. We have also Corsars on the field. By the way, if you didn't know, Corsars are a great counter unit to the enemy pikemen. And this slaughterhouse here will be taken down next. The attack will definitely continue, and in the worst case scenario, the Elven player can still go for the heal, and Mr. Piggy, the model player, will also end up losing a builder, which is quite unfortunate. On the other side, the model player is going for a counter attack and he might be able to take down the stable. Yeah, the stable will be definitely taken down. But in my opinion, the main objective from the model player should always be to take down the Malone trees first. Especially those three Malone trees because they are all three, all three of them are level 2. A level 2 resource building, you know, Malone tree, furnace, slaughterhouse is not only giving you more resources, but also increasing your command points from 50 to 75. Nice clamp here from the Elven player. He should be... Oh, but the Corsars... In a, in a choke point like this, the Corsars are putting fire on the ground. And you can see they are taking damage over time. Again, the Corsars from Umbar are pretty strong against Pikemen. And they will be able to defend this attack by keeping the Slaughterhouse alive. That's actually a nice win for the Moto player, definitely. But on the, on the other side of the map, we have some pikemen and also lancers pressuring the slaughterhouses. The slaughterhouse here will be taken down first. Elven player might even lose one of the barracks, so he has only one barracks left. That's the only production building he has left on the field. The builder. Oh, that's gonna be close. Oh, he was barely able to get away. But, you know, after all, after all I guess that was a still a very successful attack from the model player. He was able to take down the stable, he was able to take down the level 2 Malone tree, and even the barracks. While being able to keep this level 2 slaughterhouse alive, but he was losing the one in the front side. And 14 power points collected by the Elven player May Shadow Fax, that's huge. He has also collected 660 command points, so his resource income, look at the minimap. Look at this Malone trees at the top side. So his resource income is not looking shabby at all, and he's actually quite ahead. We have 400 command points against 710, but on the bright side, Moto player has almost collected 10 power points, which is going to be very, very important. And I'm assuming he's going to use it on this one in the back side, because this one is quite badly damaged. Industry, if you don't know, is increasing the amount of resources from one selected slaughterhouse by 200%, which is quite a lot. And Moto Faction is one of the factions that struggles early on and shines bright like a diamond in the late game and hitting like an absolute truck with the economy advantage and the units you are able to get on the field. 
We have Mouth of Sauron joining the battlefield as well from the Fortress. For the Mortal play I missed the begin, no heroes just yet from May Shadow of X on the other side. Rallying Call has been used. Uh, Elven player has 15 power points collected after the Rallying Call, but he is not using them for anything. In most of the situations we can see the Elven player going for the Mist, which is not gonna only uh, debuff the enemy units, but also nullifying the enemy leadership. In this, case, for, in this case, for example, the Eye of Sauron would get completely negated. Okay, that's a nice attack. He will be able to take down the Slaughterhouse on the backside. This one is going down first. Mouth of Sauron is level 2, by the way. His level 4 is gonna be very important as well, because that's gonna unlock the Doubt ability, which is doing something similar to the Cave Bats from the Goblin faction or Creebane from the Isengard faction. It nullifies the enemy leadership, and on top of that, it debuffs the enemy unit. Leadership is not existing right now, unless he's gonna fight around this area. There is a statue in the back. The statue is giving leadership and also fear resistant to the elven units. But interesting choice here, definitely going for a very questionable elven wood summon. That's a risky, uh, risky use, by the way. Why? Because elven wood will cost the elven player 10 power points after the rallying call from his spellbook, while the moto player can easily cover that and counter that with his own tainted land, which only costs five. Um, power points from the spellbook. But I mean, obviously, Moto player doesn't have the power points just yet. He went for the industry and was also able to keep the slaughterhouse alive. Yes, he's lower on command points, but trust me, the industry buffed a level 3 slaughterhouse is giving him a lot of resources. We can actually check how much. Uh, let's scroll down. Uh, 137. That's quite a lot. I mean, if you compare that with a, with a level. Uh, two Malon tree here, which is only giving you, I can't even see that, 21. Just compare that for a second. <laughs> Alright, so we have a Barracks level 2, a Barracks in the backside, and he's going even for the third Barracks. I mean, he can afford it. He has also a stable up on the field. Almost 11 power points collected. I'm assuming he's gonna try to save for the ends. Because we know we have seen Elven gameplay many, many times on this channel. And what, what we can say about the Elven faction is the fact that they will struggle quite a lot when it comes to finish of the game. Because the army, like most of the time, is gonna based it's gonna be based 90% on these Lorian archers slash Midwood archers. They are great when it comes to take down the enemy units, yes. But the archers are pretty much dealing little to zero damage to the enemy structures. With that being said. You will need the support of the ants with three beards and all the support you can get in order to siege the enemy buildings, in order to take down the enemy fortress and win the game. Alright, the Malone tree here has been taken down. We have level 3.5 Mouth of Sauron on the field, 12 almost 13 power points collected, so he's very, very close to get the end summon from the spellbook unlocked. 810 command points still. All these Malone trees at the top side are still remaining on the field. And all of them are actually quite, quite close to hit level 2. We have 550 command points only for the Moto player. After the industry, he was able to collect 6, uh, six more power points. These 6 power points he can invest if he wants to into the Tainted Land. Mouth of Sauron is really close to get level 4, which is gonna be needed. You will need to debuff, especially on the Mirkwood Arches to make them weaker. Otherwise, you know what I'm gonna say. The Mirkwoods are definitely the best Arches in the game. And they are hitting like an absolute truck. The Siege Works is coming up for the Moto player. We might see some Catapults later on. I think Catapults are a great counter to almost everything what the Elven faction can offer, including the Ants. Remember, Ants are struggling quite a lot against Fire. And the Moto Catapults are shooting with Fire without any upgrades. Okay, Rallying Call has been used offensively from May Shadow Fax. Um, Mouth of Sauron is almost level 4. Warchand and Eye of Sauron is ready for defense as well, and he has even a catapult expansion around the fortress for defensive purposes. There they come and summon from May Shadow Facts. Alright, uh, Mouth of Sauron has to be careful, he needs to avoid fighting those pikemen. The ants are definitely not in the range to attack the fortress, but they will be able to take down one of the slaughterhouses for now. Even though I gotta say I don't like the positioning of these ants, they are so far away from the main army, so they have zero backup. 
and pikemen in Rise of the Witch King are a great counter to the ends as well. So they are forced to reposition. The time remaining is going down quite fast. Mouth of Sauron is almost level 4. I mean, he's now sitting on almost the same experience for a long time. But level 4 finally unlocked, which is a huge power spike for Mouth of Sauron because it unlocks the Daubt ability. Targeted enemy units suffer minus 25% damage, and minus 25% armor, and nullifies the enemy leadership on top of that. You have also Gothmog, the second hero joining the battlefield from the model player Mr. Piggy. And the Alvin player doesn't want to go for the heroes at all. And I feel like um, all heroes almost from the Alvin faction are gonna be a great choice against the model faction. When we talk about Hydeer with the Golden Arrow, a Global Stun with the Cloud Break. Oh, he needs to be careful! Oh my god, it was really, really close, and Mouth of Sauron almost got taken down. Was barely able to get away. Elven player has still a great amount of map control and model player is struggling quite a lot with the command points, but again, industry is helping him out quite a lot. Siegeworks is level 3 and we're gonna get to see some of these black riders very very soon as the Elven player is going for another big attack. 13 power points almost collected by the model player. After the industry, on the other side we have 4 almost 5 power points collected after Rallying Coal, Elvin Wood and the End Allies. Pretty good. And again, like I said before, I feel like Mouth of Sauron's Daubt ability is gonna be very very important when it comes to defend such an attack. Because now he has also End Mood and the first End is already joining the battlefield, the second one is on his way. Um, the catapult expansion should be using the aggressive stance. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because with the aggressive stance, you can actually increase the range of the defensive uh, expansions around the fortress. Especially around, uh, you know, with the siege weapons. Um, how can I show you? I can't even click on that. But trust me on that one. If you use aggressive stance on the catapult, it will have not only more damage output. No, but also the range is going to be increased. Alright, so we have uh, more ends. This this is the second end. We have one here, which is again, uh, look at this, you see? Um, siege plus 15% range. And obviously, ends are getting also more range, more damage. No, not more damage, it's only about more range. The damage is gonna remain the same, but they lose 20% more, you know, armor. But doesn't matter that much for the expansions around the fortress. Because the only thing that can kill them are those ends. Alvin Wood is gonna be used once again defensively. Model is fully committing, but Mist is not being chosen by the Alvin player, that means the leadership can't get negated. Fury is being used by Gothmog. He's diving inside the army. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. He's also very, very low, but I think that should be more than enough to defend such an attack, and that's a huge win here for the model player, because not only he was able to defend himself, he will also be able to take down those ends. And also was, you know, forcing his opponent to use the Elvin Wood once again, kinda defensively. On the bright side, however, for Mei Shadow Fax is the fact that he will be able to take down multiple uh, slaughterhouses, one by one. And that's gonna hurt the economy from the model player Mr. Piggy big time. And even one of these Orc Pits is gonna be taken down next. So only one Orc Pit is remaining on the field. Haradrim Palace got destroyed as well because it was level 2. Now it's only level 1. And the power points are rising. Moto is trying to go for a counter attack, which makes sense because by only defending yourself, you won't be able to win the game. And he has even Worm unlocked from the spellbook. And Worm, if used properly, I think he can actually end up killing multiple Malon trees and even the barracks level 2. We know the Worm is dealing incredible amount of damage to both resource buildings but also production buildings in Rise of the Witch King. And I feel like the Worm can also be a great counter situationally against the enemy ends. Again, ends are weak against fire and this Worm is attacking with fire. We have three ends joining the battlefields, but so far the usage of the ends, not only from the ends mood, but also from the end allies summoned from the spellbook by Meshiro Fax were kinda questionable. Because normally, if you wanna use your ends, you wanna have 
You want to make sure that you have some units around them to actually keep them alive. Like, make multiple pikemen, archers, this way the easterlings or the heroes from the model player can't actually get close to the ends. Because ends are also like siege weapons, they are stronger than most of the other siege weapons, true. But, and the pikemen but also heroes are gonna be able to take them down, to take them down quite fast. So one end is already down, the second one is gonna get burned down potentially. Unlike in Battle for Middle Earth 1, the fire doesn't remain forever, so it's gonna eventually turn off. Um, the siege is continuing, one of the catapult expansion has been taken down. We are also getting to see some more catapults from the siege works level 3. The Black Riders are finally on the field. Moto was struggling quite a lot, look at the money from the, from the model player though. He has over 4,000 resources collected, that's quite a lot. I think he can even go for the Witch King. And uh, the reason why he has so much money is uh, because he could he could not make any more units. He was command points kept. Um, I would, in a situation like this, I would love to see some of these upgrades on the Fortress. Imagine the Gorgorov Spire Fireball, uh, which is like a AoE atomic bomb. <laughs> and that can actually uh, defend a full attack of the um, Elven player May Shadow Facts easily. Mouth of Sauron is getting more and more experience, he's almost level 6, level 7 will be unlocking the Evil Eye. The Evil Eye from Mouth of Sauron is similar to the Easter Light from Gandalf for example. And uh, also quite cheap hero for the, for the power they can actually get. One of the few heroes for the price that has also a level 10 ability. But Cloudbreak is being used now. It's a double-edged sword from the Elven player, why? Because Cloudbreak cost 15 power points like the end summon. He was mainly using it to kill those black riders from the model player Mr. Piggy but that won't be enough and it looks like they will be able to get away. And it's also gonna delay his 25 power point ability from the spellbook as well. He's now uh, 23, 22 power points away from getting to, to 25. Fighting against Mouth of Sauron in, in a situation like this is not, is nothing you wanna do. He was able to kill multiple Lancers. He's almost level 7 now. We have one of the, you know, the first hero actually from the Elven player May Shadow Vax joining the battlefield and his name is uh, Treebeard from the End Mood. Also the Forge is up on the field. We might see some Silvertone arrow upgraded midput arches later on. On the bright side for the Elven player is definitely the fact that he is not struggling resource wise. He has still 885 command points collected. This Malon tree is up at the, uh, at the top side. This is level 2 and a half. This is almost level 2. Are helping him almost all game long. But the model player is struggling quite a lot. But the struggle might have an end because the Witch King himself from the model player is joining the battlefield now. Remember the Witch King? There are two Witch Kings in Rise of the Witch King, guys. One of them is from the Moto faction. And one of them is from the Engma faction. Witch King. I think the biggest power from the Witch King, from both Witch Kings actually, is the fact that they have a crazy effective debuff. Like minus 33% damage and minus 25% armor is quite a lot against the Elven faction because Elves, they don't have that much armor, but they have a lot of damage and you reduce the damage by one third, which is quite a lot. And Witch King is really, really tanky anyway, he has 6000 health with level 1. But the HP doesn't scale off the Witch King, if you didn't know. So he won't get more HP the more levels he get, unlike most of the other heroes. The Malon tree here is gonna be taken down, the debuff is gonna be very effective from the Witch King. Le level 7 Evil Eye, I would love to see this ability, let's see if he's gonna use it. He's getting more and more experience. Witch King was diving in, he is now level almost 3. Evil Eye might be used in this situation. I think um, the Elven player is struggling, you can see yourself, to take down this catapult, uh, catapult here, which is sieging the end mood. We're gonna keep an eye on Mouth of Sauron. During all this time, some peasants were able to invade this side of the model player and were actually able to get quite, you know, a lot of damage done, which is impressive. They are coming from the inn at the top right side. Also, the peasants got buffed um, in the patch 2.02 version 8.4. We have even two ends sieging from the top side. So that's a, that's the smart move. 
Because he knows he has, I mean, we are talking about Major of X. Major of X knows he has more resource income. He knows he, can sp he has to split the fight. I think the heroes, they will have more and more impact in the lead game. Especially Ma uh, Mouth of Sauron, once he's level 10, he can actually make the enemy units fight against each other. Rallying Call is being used. Witch King is quite low, so he needs to be careful. Oof, boys. I'm actually quite surprised that uh, Treebeard didn't get one-shotted. Because we have just seen the Rain of Fire, which is one of the ultimate abilities of the Mortal Faction. And the Black Riders, in the meantime, were also able to take down Treebeard. Um, now it's time for Mordor to go for a counter-attack. Because remember, the Elven player went for the Cloud Break, so he's still quite far away from getting his 25 ability unlocked. Which can be Sunflare, but also Flat. Uh, level 3 Barracks, we have also seen the Nolder Warriors before, which are the ultimate unit from the Elven faction, just like the Black Riders from the Mordor faction. Almost 11 power points collected now by the, Mordor, by the Elven player. And we have 600 command points, finally more command points available now for the Moto player. And he has already collected 2 power points after the Reign of Fire. And finally he will be fighting for the map control and might be able to take down multiple of these Molon trees. That's gonna reduce the amount of resources but also the amount of command points the Elven player has right now. Black Riders are level 4, almost level 4, and they have also a debuff. Which makes them one of the strongest 1v1 skirmishers in the game. And for me, the top tier of, of uh, mini heroes. That was the evil eye, by the way. You could see yourself. That's like an Eye of Sauron ability, which looks similar to the Easter Relight from Gandalf. I would say Easter Relight is still more powerful because it's also able to stun the enemy units around. But Evil Eye, I mean, you can also not compare Mouth of Sauron with Gandalf because Mouth of Sauron costs not. You know, doesn't even cost half the price. Alright, beautiful. Uh, we can also see they have the Elven armor purchased on these Lancers. The heroes are quite tough and very, very hard to deal with for Major of X. And that's what I meant before. I think heroes are a great investment into the lead game. So they might not be very, very effective early on. But the longer the game goes, the more impactful they would become. And especially those scaling heroes like Mouth of Sauron, but also Witch King. Especially Witch King, of course. One of the most expensive, but also one of the most useful heroes in the game. The debuff is effective. You can switch between the weapons you have. You can get on the Fell Beast. Which might not be very effective against the Elven faction. Because on the Fell Beast, you have much less armor against archers. That's why he chooses to get on foot. And the Witch King of the Engmar faction can get mounted on the horse, or just like this witch can get dismounted and be on foot. Almost 7 power points collected, the worm is gonna be available, we missed, I missed the first worm summon unfortunately, sorry for that. Um, we have also cloud break back up, 15 power points collected, he might go for the cloud break here in order to catch down those uh, black riders and take them down. Cloud break is a global stun, stuns every unit without fear resistance. Either from the heroes, buildings, also when the, every unit in Rise of the Witch King can get only feared until they are level 5. After level 5, they will have a passive which makes them immune against fear. But these units are only level 4 almost, so they are still one a bit more than one level away from getting the fear resistant. But even with the Cloud Break, he was not able to finish them off. And he will actually be able to get away, it's huge. We also see some Haradrim Arches now on the field from the Haradrim Palace level 3. Because he has a Siege Works level 3, he might also go for the Heavy Armor and Forge Blades later on. We also see a level 2 Orc Pits for the Black Riders, and Black Orcs I mean, sorry. 18 power points collected for the Elven player, finally. He's getting closer and closer to the 25. The Worm is back up for the model player, Mr. Piggy Poo. 750 command points and once again great amount of resources but the problem is once again it's not about his resources it's about his command points his command points kept most of the time and the money you have in the bank is kind of useless 
And if you don't have anything to spend the money on, you can always go for the upgrades on the fortress. You can purchase this upgrade like it does. You can go for the banner carry upgrade if you want to purchase fire arrow upgrade from this from the Haradrim Palace level 3. Because for these kind of stuff, you don't need to have command points. Um, you can get them now and use them later on. 13 power points collected now by the model player. One of the longer games, by the way, in the version 8.4. 800 command points available now. Again, 735. And that's one of the first times, actually, in this game I see the model player being able to collect more command points than his opponent. And you can see the map is now splitting in two pieces. The right side is under control from the white model player, Mr. Piggy, and the left side is still under control from the blue Elven player, Major of X. But definitely hero, hero difference is huge. Heroes are very, very hard to take down. Look at the Witch King, he's able to hit multiple units at the same time. Black Riders are coming as well, they're almost level 4. Elven player is getting more and more power points collected, yes. But he doesn't have the, he doesn't have the momentum anymore. And it's gonna become eventually harder for the, for the Elven player to deal with the heroes because they are getting more and more experience, they are leveling up, they are unlocking more abilities. And also the fact that the model player might actually make more and more catapults, which is a nightmare for every Elven player. 23 power points collected by May Shadow Facts, 18 power points collected by Mr. Piggy. Might even go for Balrog, by the way, guys. But I think it's not possible to go directly to Balrog, so he might be forced to get another power point ability first. I don't I don't remember the spellbook exactly anymore, but we shall see. The Malon tree, level 3 is gonna be taken down by the by the Black Riders and also Witch King, Gothmog and Mouth of Sauron are always side by side. Mouth of Sauron is level 9 by the way. Gothmog is um level I can't click on him. <laughs> He's a fat orc, but <laughs> I can't click on him. He's not fat enough, I guess. Oh god. What? I can't click on him, guys. Sorry. There we go. He's level 7.5. So he has the fear resistant, which is actually against elves quite impressive. Because fear resistant is going to be effective against the cloud break, for example. And look at this attack. With nothing else and nothing more but only heroes, he's able to deal incredible amount of economical damage. 850 command points collected by the model player. Catapults are trying to protect against those Mifflons. 26 power points collected. Now the heroes, they should be easily able to get away. Uh, Gothmog is inside Mouth of Sauron, kinda. I can't, you can't even see him when you don't, when we don't uh, change the angle of the camera. Model player has now 26 power points, but I'm assuming he's gonna be forced to get another power point first before he can go for Balrog. On the other side, finally 25, and he has the Sun Flare ability available. Sun Flare is very effective against the forces of darkness. I am pretty certain that he can actually one-shot the Black Riders, for example, with the Sun Flare, but it's also very effective against the enemy structures. Okay, he's gonna go for the Arrow Volley now. Um, the game is stalling longer and longer and I think every minute is gonna favor the model player more because he's very close for the second 25. He's gonna get his Baldrock summon definitely much much faster. Uh, then the album player will be able to get his flood unlocked. And also the fact that uh, Mouth of Sauron is really close to level 10, which is a game changing ability by the way in Rise of the Witch King, that can literally win him the game as well. And by the way guys, if you are looking for more content like this in the future, this channel is all about Battle for Middle Earth content. I want to also say thank you big time, uh, because thanks to you guys we were able to complete the sponsorship for Raid Shadow Legends. That's the first time someone is sponsoring our community, which makes me proud and happy at the same time. I'm very very happy for your support guys. I don't know if I deserve it, but I thank you anyway. And if you haven't done it yet, I'm also streaming on Twitch, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is gonna be in the video description down below. And also just make sure to join our Discord community, because we have over 800 members in Discord. All of them are Battle for Middle Earth players. If you have any questions about anything, 
how to install the game or whatsoever, I think Discord is the right place to communicate. Uh, Black Riders are here. Um, Ants are summoned once again, but where did he summon them? I can't even see them on the field anymore. I think they got killed pretty much the second they got summoned. Cloudbreak got used. Arrow Volley is being used here from the model player. On top of the Nolder Warriors. They are taking damage over time because of the fire on the ground. Cloudbreak's effect is gone and the Black Riders, they should be easily able to get away. But look at the power points from the model player. He will have Baldrog pretty much at the same time with his Reign of Fire. Alright, uh, he might lose the Siege Works to the Elven Pikeman. Or the Ants were at the corner at the bottom right side, my bad. But they won't be able to take down the Siege Works. The catapult around the fortress is doing a great job defending. And I feel like Elven player was definitely ahead in this game so far, but he was not able to close the game and I think the main mistake, and you can also let me know your opinions about this game in the comment section below guys, was that Mishiro Fax was not using his ends as he should. He was not backing them up with more archers, with more sports to keep them alive. He was randomly using them, wasting a lot of time but also I, a lot of resources because the ants they cost 700 each and I think in this game he lost with Tribiat at least 10 ants in total without being able to deal any kind of damage yeah he might be able to take down 1, 2, 3 slaughterhouses oh that's the sun flare boys you can see the black riders are dying in one shot that's what I meant before but yes this is works anyway so he can go for them they cost 2000 by the way they cost more than many heroes on the other side, Reign of Fire is almost back up. He was forced to go for Darkness first. Darkness is a global ability which turns the map into darkness and it's a spell that always stacks, so it's gonna make your units stronger regardless if they are buffed or if they have leadership because unlike buffs or leadership, spells always stack in Rise of the Witch King. And the damage increase is actually quite nice. So you deal 33% more damage and armor, and if you have heavy armor purchase from the Siege Works level 3 and Forge Blades purchase, he's gonna go for Darkness now. Look at the units, they're gonna glow now like crazy. Again, it stacks with Warchant and the leadership of Eye of Sauron or the leadership, which is called Day of the Orcs, by Gothmog, who's level 8, by the way. Okay, Evil Eye is available, will be used now. Nice on the Nolder Warriors one-shotting them. The power points are rising for the model player. I have not seen Mouth of Sauron hitting that highly, that high rank for a long time, and he's very, very close to get level 10 unlocked. He keeps attacking now, and the heroes are invincible. They are quite tanky. 4200 health. Witch King has 6000 health. Again, like I said before, it doesn't have a skill. So the health from level 1 until level 10 is always gonna remain the same. The damage is going to be increased, obviously. You can see melee damage 394 and the range damage is 526. The range damage means when he's on the Fell Beast. Um, okay, we have Catapults. We are getting Haradrim Marches on the field. He is also going for the Fighter Upgrade. And Fighter Upgraded Archers, they have like a, like a big advantage against Silvertone Arrow Upgraded Archers. Why? Because the Silver Silvertone Arrow Upgraded Archers are only good against other units. But the Silvertone doesn't add too much damage against enemy buildings, unlike Fire Arrow Upgraded Archers. Alright, Black Riders are here. The Lancers are diving in, but holy guacamole. This Witch King is hitting so hard. Elvin Wood will be used. Would be a mistake now to go for the Tainted Line when you are so close for the Balrog Summon. Black Riders, holy nice, beautiful, the observability being used. Oh yeah, that looks so nice. And Mouth of Sauron is almost level 10, the end mood is going down. And the Reign of Fire is available, he has enough power points collected now for Balrog and that might be the end of the game. Guys, if you enjoyed this one, please don't forget to leave a like. The likes, if you don't know, cost you nothing but helps me out for the YouTube algorithm quite a lot. And if this is your very first time on my channel and you are looking for more content like this in the future, 
please consider subscribing as well. Thank you very much in advance. 29 power points collected. Worm is gonna be available pretty much at the same time. So you can actually go for Worm, Rain of Fire and Balrog Summon at the same time, guys. And the Catapults are doing a great job. And actually, this Glwendal Lancers with heavy armor are quite tough. We shall see what's gonna happen now. We're gonna keep an eye around this area, definitely. To see both these abilities at the same time. Sunflare. There we go. Oof. Nice one. Balrog will be summoned as well. But we won't be able to see him in action because May Shadow Facts will be, leave, will be leaving the game. And the game is won by Mr. Piggy with the Moto Faction. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I see you next time. Take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic weekend. And if you have any questions about Battle for Middle Earth games or you want to get to know me better, the answer is to join the Discord. I see you guys in there. Take care. See you next time. Peace.